Hello, welcome to the Thursday, January 5th, 2017 edition of the Sands and the Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. About a week ago, we noted an increase in scanning for GRE, the Generic Routing Capsulation Protocol. A reader now noted that in October, a bug was fixed in Linux related to GRE. We don't really know if this scanning is related to this bug, if someone is trying to find vulnerable systems. But uh, anyway, uh, this vulnerability led to a denial of service condition if you were sending packets that had GRE inside of GRE packets and uh, did that multiple times. Now, the packets we have seen did not have that characteristics, but it could be an attempt to just enumerate systems that do support GRE. It should also be noted that the vulnerability is not exploitable for systems that use the regular 1500-byte Ethernet MTU because the packet wouldn't really fit inside that size with all the nested GRE headers that are required to exploit this vulnerability. And then we have kind of a new variant to the ransomware scheme in that attackers are taking advantage of unsecure MongoDB installs and are then claiming at least that they encrypted the data. It has been reported several times over the last couple of years that you should not expose your database directly to the internet, in particular not these newer NoSQL databases like MongoDB that are often not password secured. This latest trick pretends to encrypt the data, it actually doesn't encrypt it, it just adds a message that claims data is encrypted and then demands ransom. In other cases, the attacker is actually copying the data first and then deleting it from the database and then again asking for ransom in order to return the data to the rightful owner. The short answer here is don't expose your databases, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, and whatnot else. MongoDB is specifically affected by this latest run of ransom attempts. Also, if you do find an exposed instance in your environment, assume it has already been compromised. Uh, these instances have been enumerated, for example, by search engines like Shodan, and attackers often then have added uh, rogue administrator accounts to the database. So if you now try to secure it and don't actually clean out uh, these old administrator accounts, uh, you may still be vulnerable. And Google released the the usual monthly update for Android. Now, the one bug that sticks out here is the one critical vulnerability in Media Server, which again is yet another problem with this stage fright library that has caused a lot of problems in the past. Remember that Android is also used on BlackBerry. Also remember yesterday I talked about LG TVs that are using Androids. So all of these systems that are using Android probably need to be patched for this vulnerability. And as far as your phone is concerned, if you have one of the Google Nexus or Pixel phones, you should have the update available. Again, there will be two updates released, one that includes updates for all of the different hardware drivers, and then one just for the base operating system that does not include hardware drivers because, well, they may be different on different phones. Now, if you don't have a Google phone, then of course you'll have to wait for your carrier or the manufacturer of the particular phone to offer that update for you. One question that comes often up when I'm teaching web application security is how an attacker could possibly attack an internal website. Now, the demo I usually show there is Beef, the browser exploitation framework that of course allows you to remote control a browser inside the network and then use it as an attack platform to attack sites inside. Now, NetSparker wrote a pretty nice blog post showing how this is sort of done on a more detailed level 
level. Then with all the magic that sort of is involved uh, with uh, beef, in particular, they're using cross-site history manipulation in order to find internal WordPress sites. WordPress, of course, is a very popular platform, many old vulnerable versions, and you may be tempted to not keep internal WordPress sites up to date because you think nobody will find or attack them. This is a nice proof of concept. Not sure how practical this particular attack is as described in this article, but nevertheless, a real nice write-up in what cross-site history manipulation is all about and how an attacker would take advantage of it. Well, uh, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.